Hey there, my name is Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path. So for the last several weeks, I have taught you how to make the Bling in the New Year necklace, the Bling in the New Year earrings, then last week was the ring, and today we're going to finish it out with the bracelet. Now, of course, the component is going to be made exactly like the components from all the rest of the videos that we've done this past series. And again, just like last week, I told you you can use a 6, an 8, or a 10 pound fire line, as well as your S line cord, your 1G thread, your NIMO thread, whatever you want to use, but you're going to make components. So the first thing you're going to want to do is start making components. For me, what I've done is I have made one component of each color that I've been doing the, um, the series with. And what I've done is as I've made the component, I've just left the threads on these because you're going to need these. So my hope today is to number one, show you two techniques of how to get this bracelet put together. And number two, how to get the right sizing for the bracelet. So obviously, like in the last few weeks, you're going to need 14 millimeter Rivoli's as well as four millimeter Bicones, four millimeter fire polish rounds, and size 11 seed beads. Now, in the first video and in last week's video, I told you to be sure and use fire polish rounds on the bottom. It is important to note that you can use four millimeter bicones on the top and the bottom, but especially for this bracelet, I do highly suggest you use the fire polish rounds on the bottom part, so our initial ring, because this is going to be on your skin, so you don't want that to constantly scratch your skin. And if you're like me, especially winter, when you get something kind of scratchy looking, you see that all over your skin. So just be aware of that. Also, the fire polish beads are going to give you a good barrier between the rivoli and your beads. So that way, when you actually set it down on your skin, your rivoli is not going to touch your skin. So you won't have to worry about your um, foil backing coming off. If you have a lot of acidity in your skin, I recommend possibly that you take some clear fingernail polish and put it on the back of the rivoli before you actually um, make your component. So that way, even if it does touch your skin, you're still going to be okay. But go ahead and and, um, get some components made and I'll show you how to get started. So once you've got some of your components made, then you're ready to start connecting them. So I'm going to show you two different ways to connect. And if you need to know how the, to make the component, you can go back to the Bling in the New Year necklace or the Bling in the New Year earrings to see actually how to make the component. So I'm going to start out with my rose component and my thread is coming out of any one of the four millimeter bicones here along the outer edge. And again, I'm coming out of a bicone. I'm going to thread on just like our necklace. We're going to do two size 11 seed beads and I'm going to go through the four millimeter bicone on another component here along the outer edge and pull that through. Then you pick up two more size 11 seed beads and go through the four millimeter bicone that you started with on the rose component and pull that on through. And then you can take and reinforce this several times and trim it off to connect all of your components in that fashion. So it will be exactly like your necklace. Each component takes about three quarters of an inch to an inch of space. So then if you add this, it's going to take up another quarter inch of space on your um, bracelet. So once you do that, now let me show you how to make the other attachment to see if you might like it so better. So the other way that you can connect two components together for the bracelet is to kind of use a right angle weave Monty technique. So again, I'm coming out of the bicone on one of my components, doesn't matter which one, and I'm going to pick up a four millimeter bicone. And I'm going to go through a four millimeter bicone on the second component. So whatever my second component is going to be. And I'm going to go ahead and go through just the bicone and pull that. So, so far, We've got something that looks like this. Then you could pick up a second bicone. 
go up through the bicone that you started with so that when you finish, you have a little right angle weave connection between your two components. Now, I would definitely go ahead and I would go through this section again to reinforce it and also, it's going to hold it together as we add the Monty on top because the Monty is just going to give it a little bit of extra bling. Now, you can also add bicone crystals, like three millimeter crystals to the top, and I'll be happy to show you that as well as even another technique of how you could put this together. Okay, so I want to come out, once I get it through here, there we go, I'm coming out of the um, bicone, and it doesn't matter if you're coming out on the first or the second component, but I'm going to pick up an 11, a 3.9 Monty, and an 11. My thread is coming out to the left here of the bottom component. So I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come through the bicone here of the top component and I'm gonna go from right to left. So what happens is when we do that, that's gonna make those beads sit at a diagonal across that right angle weave section that I just made. And you'll have to flip the Monty over to make it lay flat. Then we'll pick up an 11 and go through the other hole of the Monty and then an 11 and go back through the bicone on the first component once more so that when you pull it, now that gives you another way to connect your two components together. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave, I'm just gonna leave this how it is for now and then I'm gonna thread the needle onto this other component. Now, if you're happy and you decide that the Monty is how you want to go, then you'll just reinforce that and then finish it off. No big deal. But I actually want to take, and I'm going to use some 3 millimeter bicones to show you one more technique of how you can put it together. So I'm going to start that same way. I'm going to build the base box with the 4 millimeter bicones. And then I'm gonna go through and reinforce this one more time and grab some three millimeter bicycles. I've reinforced the circle of the four beads again, and now I'm gonna add my three millimeter beads. So I'm gonna add a three millimeter bicone, a size 11 seed bead, and a three millimeter bicone. And just like when I added the Monty here in the center, my thread is coming out to the left of the bicone on the second component. So I'm gonna come to the third component and I'm gonna go through that bicone going from right to left so that my beads will sit at a diagonal. Then I'll pick up a three millimeter bicone and go through the 11 seed bead that I just added in that step. And pull it and then pick up a three millimeter and go back through the bicone on the second component and pull it tight. And you'll, if you choose to do this, you'll need to reinforce that little set of four once more. So as you can see, there are three ways that you can connect these components into making a bracelet. And honestly, my favorite component thus far, or the connection, is the Monty. So I'm going to go ahead and finish connecting mine out with the Montys, and then I'll show you how to add the ends of the bracelet and how to figure out the measurements for your bracelet. So now I have all of my components connected. I've made seven components for my bracelet using the um, Monty technique to actually um, connect them together. And when I finish this last connection here between these two components, I threaded the needle onto the um, the thread here on this last component and I have made sure that that thread is coming out opposite where I connected the two components. Now there are two connection techniques that you can use or finishing techniques that you can use that will come out to a different size bracelet. Um, if you use seven components like I have here and you use this first finishing technique, you're gonna end up with a bracelet that's about a six and a half. So the first finishing technique starts out like this. I'm going to come out of the bicone 
and I'm going to pick up seven size 11 seed beads. Then I'm going to pick up the first part of my clasp. Now the clasp has a jump ring on it or yeah, you can use a jump ring or a split ring. But all I'm going to do is my thread is currently coming out of the bottom of this bicone. So I'm going to take the needle and come right back down through the same bead so that when I pull that thread tightly, you can see that it's made a loop of beads here with my clasp. So if you do the finishing technique just like this, and you do this on the first component and the last component, you're going to end up with a bracelet that is a size six and a half. Now that for me is too small. So to make what I need, which is a size seven, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. So I'm gonna be using finishing technique number two here. And again, this is gonna leave you with about a size seven bracelet. So I'm gonna pick up, I'm coming out the same place and I'm gonna pick up three four millimeter bicones. And I'm going to come back down through the same bicone that I'm coming out of so that it makes a circle. So basically, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing another little section just like I've done the connections with. I'm going to go through this little set here one more time to reinforce it. Well, come on. There we go. Now I'll pick up an 11, a Monty and an 11. My thread is coming out to the right. So my thread is coming out to the right and I'm gonna take my needle and go through this top bicone going from left to right so that my beads will lay at a diagonal. I'm gonna thread on one 11 and I'm going to go through the Monty that I just added, and I'm gonna keep my finger on that Monty as I pull, so it'll keep my tension tight. And then I'm gonna go back through the four millimeter that is on my component that I started this whole little box with, so that it looks just like it does down here on the connections. Now I'll stitch through my beads to exit the four millimeter opposite where my thread or my box little started. And then this time is where I can pick up seven or six or however many you want. I actually think I'm gonna pick up six this time. Two, four, five, six. So I'm gonna pick up six 11s, the first part of my clasp, and then I'm gonna go back through the bicone to make a circle. So that this is what I've got here. And I can go back through this several times to reinforce and then tie that thread off. Once you off. have the first clasp piece attached, then you are ready to attach the second part of your clasp. Now, if you didn't save any of the tail here for this specific component, you'll need to add some thread to add this part of the clasp. But what this does, doing it this way, gives you a seven inch bracelet. And when you actually, let me see if I can zoom this out a little bit. No, okay. Um, when you actually take and you lay it out and measure it, if I measure from side to side, this actually tells me that I have an eight inch bracelet. But because of the size of the components, you don't have that. And I'll show you what I mean. Let me get this up here so that you can see it here. Okay. So, whoop, I am all sorts of wonky. Okay, so here it is. And Lord, there's stuff everywhere. So if you put it down on the bracelet, you can see it, it does between a six and a quarter and a seven, because that dark line is a seven for that right there, finishing off exactly like that. And so you can see the roller told me that I had an eight, but because of the size um, components that you're putting on the bracelet, that makes all the difference in the world as to actually what size you're going to be with the finish of the bracelet. A 
just to kind of give you another perspective. Okay, start <clears throat> start here, Sammy. Just to kind of give you another perspective is if you look right here, each component from the start of the component to the start of the next component is going to take up about an inch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the clasp. So that will kind of give you an idea for your um, measurements on the so bracelet. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make the Bling and the New Year bracelet today and then the whole set over the last few weeks. One thing that I will say about the set, that it is um, super blingy, and if you wear them all together, you are gonna be a knockout, just let me tell you. I love it. Um, the other thing I just wanna kinda say about this, well, two more things actually. Number one is I do have the kit available on my website, which is off the beaded path beadstore.com, as well as the pattern for this um, that you can do. And the kit is exactly like the one I made today. It has the Crystal AB Sun um, Crystal Light or Peridot, um, Violet rose and aqua in this one so it's multicolored just like the um, necklace that I did. The other thing I want to tell you real quick is um, I know I'm going to get questions about this. This little contraption right here is called an easy bracelet. E as in Ernie, Z as in zebra bracelet. They also make one called an easy necklace. I used to sell these, but they get kind of hard to um, to ship at, on a regular basis. So um, I would tell you for this, either check your local bead store first, or also um, I have recommended several people to amazon.com for these um, because they do still sell them. And they work really great because you can actually take a piece like this where the, the components are a little bit bigger and you're able to put it on the bracelet cone and see exactly what size bracelet you're going to have. So it works out really, really well. So if you've never used one of these, I highly recommend that little tool. But Guys, thank you for watching, and remember, you are one stitch away from either a breakthrough or a breakdown. So let's hope you're having a breakthrough on this project and that you have a wonderful week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.